welcome back everyone um the sound is fixed so we can have the questions first and then we will get into our next chapter uh, shani please go ahead oh hi so the question that i have i know that you said um that you just said is blessed the devil can't touch us mm -hmm. our finances our health yes so oh. So what about when believers have been believers for a long time, know all this, when they get sick and they didn't bring the sickness on themselves, like let's say cancer or MS or Graves disease, stuff like that. How do you explain that in terms of because them getting sick? Yes. Does that mean that the devil, you know, mm. because you said the devil can't touch, um, can't touch us, but a lot of believers get these illnesses. Yes, yes, yeah. Um, so what we are saying is, the spiritual reality is that Satan and his demons cannot touch us. In the earlier chapter, when we saw the workings of Satan, the methods of workings, we looked at one particular technique or tactic or scheme that he uses, which is called as trespassing. What is illegal is what he does so legally he cannot enter but he tries to enter okay so uh, the way we would approach uh, sickness when satan is trespassing is we can evict him we can get him out now for whatever reason for maybe there's a small opening of some sort in that believer's life due to a false confession or a false belief uh, or some dedication, you know, something. There's some reason why there's an entry point and Satan trespasses through it. Now, when I recognize that as a believer, it's very simple. I just have to take authority, shut, evict him, shut that entry point. So uh, we can deal with that like that. Sometimes uh, we recognize that he has, he has, um, you know, like entered and he's causing some issues. And, and that brings us awareness that, okay, there is some area in our, in our lives which we still have to firm up. Okay. So uh, does that make sense, Shani? Yes, I guess what you're saying is that if a believer who you know has faith and different things like that, and who gets because because you because I hear about different pastors who um, who are in terms of um, faith pastors, different things like that, and so people who get believers who get like these illnesses that are not brought on by themselves is some kind of entry point in their life that they have that allowed it so what about if somebody got the sickness as a child like when they're seven or eight you can't say that a seven or eight year old brought that mm -hmm. into their brought mm -hmm. that into their life because they're seven or eight mm. okay so what about people? The, yeah, people, yeah yeah yes 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 Shani. so um uh, i would strongly recommend for you to um go and look up a video which we recently did uh, in the mentoring hour, and it's uh, titled um, Suffering. Okay, so what are the reasons for suffering that people go through? And sickness comes in that category. Uh, you see, our understanding is that Satan has trespassed. There can be so many different reasons why Satan trespassed in that particular uh, issue, right? We are not blaming the people. See, the last thing we must do is to say, oh, it's a faith problem. You have a faith problem. You don't have enough faith. Uh, we know that in the past, in the Christian, um, in the Christian, um, what, what do we call it? Like Christian circles or um, um, in various movements, people have done that. People have blamed believers for not having enough faith or you know doing something else that has caused the sickness, that has caused the problem in your life. But that's not the right approach. Okay, uh, we in certain situations we can clearly tell that hey, this is the re reason why such and such a person is sick. But there can be so many other reasons, and sometimes we don't find the reason, Shani, and that's a reality. Um, and 
for that, I just want to uh, state this scripture. It is in Deuteronomy 29, 29, where it says, the secret things belong to the Lord. OK? Uh, See, that there can be instances where there are godly people, very strong in the word, to the best of their knowledge and ability, they are following God. But something untoward happens in their lives. Okay, And we're not able to point to anything and say, oh, it was a faith problem, it was a confession problem, it was a this problem, that. Nothing. We're not able to point to anything and say, hey, what exactly went wrong? Why did this good believer or this pastor experience this in their lives? You see, the Bible also says that there are certain things that Deuteronomy 29, 29 says, uh, the secret things belong to the Lord. You know, sometimes we ask the question, God, why, why did it happen? You know, tell me. Maybe we won't receive an answer. Maybe. Right? There are things that have happened in our lives and we're wondering, how did it happen? How could it happen when I'm in faith? Okay, and we may not receive an answer to those questions. Also, because maybe for God, he thinks it's not necessary for you to know. Okay? And we need to be okay with that. As children of God, as believers, as human beings, we may not get to know everything. And we should be okay with that. My relationship with God should not become weak because I'm not able to understand why this happened in my life. Okay? So... That is something that we have to develop. Yes, there will be things we won't understand why it happened. But as De uh, Deuteronomy 29, 29 says, the secret things belong to the Lord. After some time, you just have to let it go. OK, I'm not able to understand how this could have happened in my life. But God, I let it go. You are still good. You are still, still faithful. You are a redeemer. You will redeem my time, my op opportunity, you know, my blessings. You will redeem it. I believe that. So I'm going to forget about the past. I'm going to forget about this thing. Whatever I know from the word, I'll hold on to it. And I will keep moving forward. So that's the attitude we need to carry. So to be able to live with the unknown, Shani, that's my point. There are unknowns. And uh, we, our faith should be such that even if there are unknowns, we must be so strong in the Lord where we say, Okay, I don't understand, but it's okay. Okay, um, does that help a bit? Yeah, I, I guess, I, I mean, that helps, but I just kind of sometimes wonder about, like, you know, if, if, if the devil can't touch us in terms of children, why are children, like, raped and murdered, things like that, because if the devil can't touch us. I think children, I, I don't know about children cover, I kind of have questions about that, too, like, especially if they have parents who are believers. Yeah, yeah. So I think it, it would be case by case mm -hmm. if we are just trying to explain why it happened to them. And we'll really have to seek the Lord and then look at how that could have happened. But in a broader uh, uh, understanding, you know, we live in, in a corrupted world. And uh, so certain things happen sometimes, even to good believers. Okay, thank you. Yeah, sure. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, Kof uh, Kofi, you could go next, please. Uh, sister, I think my question has been answered, so thank you. Okay. All right, all right. Yeah, glad to hear that. Um, that's wonderful. Uh, yes, yes, Brother Sanjay. Yeah, hello. Yeah, first, I just wanted to add something to what Shani was sharing about why, I mean, in a way, it's like, why do bad things happen to good people? Mm. And so when you mentioned that we live in a fallen world, and so this is, is, is more of a fruit of um, the fallen nature of man or sin. It's, it's more of a fruit of sin. And what, I mean, like we've, we've seen across all over the world, irrespective of where you live or irrespective of from the beginning of time till date, we have seen how sin has been playing out since the beginning of time, and how the we 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 if 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 the wages of sin are death, I mean that speaks volumes. But the fact that we are still alive today is something to be thankful and grateful to God. One thing. The second thing I'd like to 
just add is like in this world, no, if if there were no consequences uh, for sin, if if everything was you know like very uh, normal and happy, then most people would be diverted and they'd be given to the things of this world. The fact that that um, we see um, unexplained things happen like sickness, disease, deaths, little children being uh, harmed or you know people's lives being taken away at a very early age. We see all these things. It's more of a wake-up call for us to turn towards God and turn away from the world. What happens if we don't see these things happening? Our focus will be more into the things of this world. We'll get too distracted. So in a way, it's a wake-up call for everyone. It's a wake-up call and nobody's waking up. Like In a way, God is screaming out at the top of his voice, this is not our home. This is not where we belong. We belong to another kingdom. We belong to the kingdom of heaven. But yet people are so caught up in this world and caught up in the things of this world that God just has to wait for people to wake up. That's all I wanted to add. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Brother Sanjay. Um, it's true that it's a wake-up call. Uh, but, you know, the world has been like this since the uh, inception. So there's a wake-up call every day since then till today. And uh, uh, just to, you know, just to kind of reiterate that God is not causing it to happen or making it happen or, uh, you know, pushing the consequences on the world. It's just that there are consequences. Actions have consequences. You know, I can't put my hand in the fire and say, how can it get burnt? You know, that would be a silly question because if anybody does that, the property of the fire is it will burn. There are consequences. And we make uh, in, in this world, you know, in, in that way, because Adam and Eve open the door to sin. I'm not talking about, you know, personal sin of every human being. No, that sin that came into the world and corrupted the world, that has already happened. Right. And uh, that's the consequence. So it's so sad that, you know, we see sickness, disease, calamity, floods, earthquakes, uh, you know, all kinds of natural disasters. Uh, sometimes we see, uh, you know, evil things happening to people. We see wars. We see um, little children being born with deformities. I mean, what did they do to be born like that? We ask the question, how can this happen? But that's what I'm saying when I'm saying it's a corrupted world. It's a fallen world. That sin that corrupted, it exists. And that is why we are learning about authority, so that we can exercise our authority in all these things. Okay, and uh, we can uh, we can exercise our overcoming power, and whichever is the work of Satan, we do away with it. Now, I do understand that in some situations, we may not see a transformation. Okay, just do what you know to do. The best example that I can think of, you know, I know some parents who have special children, um, and uh, you know, th there's a lot of improvement in the children, but still, sometimes there are struggles as the kids are growing up, and they are not like ordinary kids. They can't go to regular schools, uh, and there are so many difficulties that the parents are facing. Uh, now, are they believing God for healing? Are they believing God for uh, the child to get better? Of course, they are very good believers, strong believers, exercising authority, everything. But even then, in such a situation, when you see that the child is needing help, right? what is the best thing that we can do? We should do what we know to do, you know, to love them, to care for them. Okay, Sickness is supposed to be healed. But when somebody is still sick and we don't know why they are sick, what can I do? I can help, I can take care, I can be a blessing, right? I can I can do what I know to do. So I think as believers, let's do that. Let's do that. I know there are situations where we struggle. If we have authority, why is this still happening? But let's do what we know to do in those situations. Okay? Don't stop praying for healing. Don't stop praying for transformation, change, healing. Don't don't stop. But while it's not manifesting the way we want it. What can we do? Do what is right. Be a blessing. Okay? Speak life, help, support. So that is something we can do. Um, yes, Shani, please go ahead. Okay, so I just want to make sure because I know that it's God's will to heal. In the Bible, Jesus healed everybody. So you're saying that even if um, 
somebody's been praying for somebody or their child them been sick for a long time it is god's will to heal them but even though they haven't seen the healing manifest or maybe a little bit to keep just having faith because eventually one day the person will get healed because jesus healed everybody in the bible and it's god's will to heal all is that what you're saying yes that's what i'm saying okay thank you yeah sure thank you all right um yeah this is a good class interaction is always good keeps us awake so uh, really um, thankful to all of you. Please bring those questions. That's when we learn, isn't it? We learn, we look, we try to look at things with different perspectives, OK? Makes us also sharper. Uh, so so far, we've understood the foundation of our, yes, yes, Nelson. Nelson has something to ask. Uh, Ma'am, huh? through Christ, do we have authority and power? So any specific? Thing that Old Testament people had. Mm. Okay, did they have authority? Right. Um, yes. So they had authority, but not the kind of authority that we carry. So all authority Jesus gave us, right, over demons, sickness, um, and the power of the enemy. After he redeemed us, but before that, did people have authority? You see, in general, yes, people had authority. Now, the people of God, you could say, had authority also because of the blessings. God blessed them and he gave them, you know, certain, um, uh, he spoke over their lives. So they had a certain capacity of authority, okay, for victory. Um, uh, but what we would say is the, the uh, level of authority wouldn't be like how we have we believers under the new covenant. Under the old covenant, to some extent, yes, they could have exercised authority, but not full. Good question. Yeah, thank you. All right. Uh, yes, yes, Shani. Please go ahead. OK, I'm not able to hear you. Could you please unmute? Oh, I'm sorry. So yeah, I just yeah, kind of take it back. So can you give an example in terms of you had authority, but how they exercise it? I was kind of not understanding how they exercise their authority in the Old Testament. Mm. So they had authority and how did they exercise? Um, see, I can only think of, uh, I mean, right now, I can think of uh, Jehoshaphat, right? Like uh, Jehoshaphat, when uh, they had to go against um, uh, an enemy army, they worship God. Okay, they send the Ark of the Covenant ahead of the, um, you know, like with praise they sent the Ark of the Covenant in Second Chronicles chapter twenty. So that's a way of exercising authority. So what happened? The enemy was overcome because of praise, because of worship. We can look at Joshua. You know, blessed by God, commissioned by God. Here is a man and a people who are marching and uh, the walls come down that is a symbol of exercising authority enemy territory is conquered so in this manner shani based on the commissioning of god the blessing of god we do see victories isn't it okay yeah, i understand now yes yes yeah, yeah. Uh, yes kofi yeah, sister, to, to add to what you just said, I think uh, the because of the authority of Jesus Christ, now we the Gentiles can also exercise that authority. Yes. In the olden days, the Gentiles had no authority to exercise right. in the name of God. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, that's very true. That's very true. So for the Gentiles, it's only after... Uh, Jesus gave it to us that the Gentiles can exercise, right? So we are, you know, the Jews, the Gentiles, and we are the people of the uttermost parts of the earth. But today we can also exercise authority because of what Jesus has done. We are all included. And that is the powerful reality. Okay, thank you. Yes. Thank you so much. Let's um, then move on to the next chapter here, which is chapter 7, which helps us understand the realms 
where we can exercise our authority. Can we exercise authority however we like? Actually, no. There are certain realms where our authority is effective and it works. So we need to understand that. Okay, um, And uh, that's what we will cover in this chapter. We have seen in history people who have exercised authority and who have seen wonderful, wonderful miracles of God. You know, sometimes you read about all these uh, generals of God when we started our uh, course here in fall semester for the on-campus students. We took us through God's generals and um, we looked up the lives of people and then we examined their lives very, very realistically. You know, the good things, the bad things and how we can learn from their lives. Uh, but when, when we consider the good part, you know, the way they moved in the authority of God, the way they overcame sickness, disease, uh, I, uh, we, we saw uh, this one particular uh, minister of God. Those days, like today we have, you know, live class. People are sitting in other countries and uh, listening to what is being taught in a different country. So it's all happening today. But when we consider some of these old ministers of God, uh, one particular minister those days, apparently through telegraph, he used to send prayer for healing. So can you imagine? Can you imagine? Requests come to the ministry and uh, just one line or a few words, be healed in Jesus' name. Telegraph. Okay. But people used to get healed. Can you imagine people were exercising authority like that? Amazing miracles, stories of amazing miracles because somebody sent a telegraph, be healed in Jesus' name or something small like that. So we've seen in history people who have used their authority. Okay? Um, and uh, I'm not saying we should copy them or it will work exactly the same way. So you do it the same way. Sometimes we see practices which are not very good. <laughs> Things like, you know, people got so angry with sickness and disease, they hit the person who's sick. Because they were actually hitting the demon, I believe. But they hit the person who's sick. Right? But we understand better now that we don't really have to do that to, to, actually, to um, you know, be violent against a human being because they are sick or they are demon-possessed. We should not do that. Okay? So there are, there are all these things that we can look at, but the... Uh, but the key is, authority was exercised. Many real stories. Uh, one particular minister of God, I, re I remember, and I just cannot forget, I used to listen to um, his books have been uh, read out by, by someone. He was not a great writer. So uh, it, they've been read out, like the version. Someone else wrote the book, the stories, and it's been read out. So I used to listen to it again and again and again, all the miracles. So one miracle goes something like, he went to a home and uh, there, a child was very, very sick uh, and he was a man of faith. So he said, don't worry, we'll pray. So when he started praying, he felt that um, he needs to pray alone. Okay? Uh, we wouldn't recommend all this. So I'm not telling you do this. Please, before I state the story, I'm telling you. But he said he felt that way and he told the family, I'm going to be alone with this very sick child. Like the child can die anytime. That was the situation. So he decided he will pray the whole night with the child. And the story goes something like somewhere in the midnight when he was praying for the child, he carried the child and the child died in his arms. Can you imagine? You know, you're alone. You came to do ministry. You're praying for the child to be healed. Child dies in your hands. What will happen tomorrow? Okay. So crazy, isn't it? Uh, but he was such a man of faith, he didn't give up. He prayed and prayed and prayed. Uh, the dead child came back to life. In the morning, the child was fully healed, alive. He gave the child to his parents and came back. And his ministry is marked by resurrection of the dead. Like, you know, a good number of resurrections in his ministry. Uh, how is that possible, we ask? All these are re real stories in the past with, you know, uh, some of which have many witnesses and some of which have been verified. Okay. Uh, People were exercising authority like this. 
we may have our own stories you know from our families from our churches where people have exercised authority and it is possible to see victory over sickness uh, disease um, you know demons and all of that so the question is can we do that right yes of course we can do it but we have to understand where that authority works and where that authority will not work okay that will also be helpful when we exercise our authority so there are these stories and i would just encourage us uh, to go back to some of these stories from history and just listen listen uh, and see what experiences people have had what was right what was not right how could we do that better so that we too can walk in the authority and if you are not the kind you know who wants to read those stories read about jesus so many instances jesus healing the sick you know jesus casting out demons he is our ultimate pattern our example so repeat repeat keep reading keep reading keep reading jesus healing jesus uh, calming the storm jesus doing this multiplying the bread the supernatural works he took authority and it worked in his life so today the expectation that we have to build is i can also see god's authority work through my life and um, it will help to understand where it works so the first one is our authority works against satan and all his demons and we've already you know talked a lot about it right we can exercise our authority against demons <clears throat> but some other points that we want to make right now one is to not become very demon conscious okay don't become very demon conscious exercising authority against demons is a good thing but you know when we start crediting satan and demons to everything that is going wrong okay for example if you take a little child let's take a 3 year old child okay um and the child is so naughty the the child is destroying everything in the house and pushing things around and doing all these things would it be right for us to say oh this kid is demon possessed you know the, the demon of disruption is working in this 3 year old child what would you what would you say to a statement like that then why is the child even doing all these works mischief <laughs> why is this child doing all these works must be a demon a demon is behind the activities of this child it's so unreasonable to say that it's a 3 year old i mean this is a 3 year old child you can't expect anything else from a three year old child so the point is let's see not everything is a demon when we become demon conscious then what happens we start blaming demons for everything you know the bulb got fused oh it must be a demon the demon doesn't want me to study bulb is gone i'll cast it out in jesus name right please bulb just change the bulb that's all <laughs> so that way um it's when we become so demon conscious that we'll see a demon in everything that's not a good place to be okay uh that's actually wrong because we have gone off balance we have become very demon conscious and we are seeing a demon in every situation so yes cast out let's cast out demons we know that jesus said you will trample on serpents and scorpions nothing by any means shall harm you so we have authority over demons but i should not go trying to cast out demons that don't exist okay so that's the point so when i'm exercising my authority against demons um i've got to be uh, i i've got to gauge is it really a demon if it's a demon try to cast it out if there is no demon then fix the situation the way it should be fixed okay so that is how we would do this so all um all believers can cast out demons but firstly we've got to identify that there is a demon 
Now, what do demons do? Uh, or uh, what are some of the demonic works? Demonic works are um, sicknesses, diseases, because we see Jesus working against this, isn't it? So Jesus opposed his enemy, Satan, and all the works of the enemy. Whenever he saw sickness, disease, what did Jesus do? He healed. Okay, he passed out demons. Obviously, Jesus is working against his enemy, Satan. And we know scriptures tell us in 1 John chapter 3, verse 8, that Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. So if Jesus is destroying sickness and disease, where is sickness and disease from? Simple maths. This is equal to that. That is equal to this. What is equal to what? Where is sickness and disease from? Satan. Okay, so sickness and disease is from Satan. So whenever we say things like, you know, God has given this sickness so that I can become better, or God has given the sickness <laughs> so that I can become mature, you don't find any basis to that in scripture. How can God, who takes away sickness, also give sickness? It wouldn't make sense, right? Like, God has to decide. Either you give it or you take it. We notice him only taking it away. And how can we say that God is giving this sickness so that I can become more mature, I can get more understanding, I can have a closer walk with the Lord. That does not have basis. God does not give sickness and disease. Okay. Uh, more about sickness, disease, I would refer you to one book. Uh, which again, you know, Pastor has written, uh, ministering healing and deliverance. In detail, it is there the basis of our um, trust in in God, our faith in God that He is a healer. How can we say that? Um, does God always want to heal? Answer is yes. It's explained in the book. Just that we don't have time to get into this. So, point again that we are making is sickness, disease are demonic works. So we can take authority over demonic works. What, are, what did we say earlier? Firstly, identify what is demonic. Everything is not demonic. After we identify, then go against it. Then we are saying sickness and disease is demonic works. Okay. Then uh, situations. There can be certain situations where um, Satan is trying to slow us down. He's trying to hinder us. He's trying to cause confusion. He's co trying to cause, um, you know, some form of uh, disturbances um, and uh, quarrels. Many different things where things are disorderly. That also uh, can be caused by Satan because it's working against the purposes of God. What God wants to do, obviously, Satan will do opposite to that. He's bringing delay and um, trying to stop it. Then we could see influences of uh, demons in many aspects. So firstly, in the lives of individuals, people. So when we are ministering to people and we see some demonic influence in their lives, I have the authority to, uh, to destroy that. Okay, I can either cast it out or bind it uh, or uh, you know declare the word, tear it down. How to, how to help people, that we will see later. But broadly now, uh, demonic works, we said sickness, disease, in circumstances, it can be influences over people. That also we can take authority over. And we can destroy the works of the devil. Then we have uh, world systems. World systems means political system, business system. We've, we've already discussed this, right? When we see influences, we can pray, we can <coughs> make declarations, or we can do certain things that will change that system and uh, you know make it a more godly system. So we can exercise our authority in that area. Maybe take up, for example, uh, just I'm just saying, uh, take up um, entertainment. Okay, entertainment industry these days. There's so much happening. Uh, not, I mean, television is gone. <laughs> Nobody even looks at the television. Uh, it's all about, you know, uh, entertainment on demand. So people are watching YouTube and Netflix and all these things. But we see so many ungodly things, right? Ungodly godly standards. We see um, 
things that are influencing people in the wrong way. Then when we identify these things, we recognize it's not from God. How do we overcome? Can um, people pray that entertainment will become cleaner, that it will have godly influence? Yes. So we can pray. We can uh, declare. We can also have people, godly people, go into that field. Imagine if people start coming up with better scripts, okay, um, um, stories that are filled with hope, stories that are um, telling people the right information, what to do. And then it comes to education, relationships, marriage, career. It will be such a blessing. If God's, God's power can take over the uh, arena of entertainment, it's like that. So every arena, even business, and I stated politics, entertainment, arts, Okay, if there are pictures that people create or, you know, art pieces that people create that is influenced by the spirit of God, it will bring healing, it will bring, bring blessing, hope to people. So in all these ways, we as believers can exercise authority. Okay, so there are many different ways in which we can actually make it happen. But the point is, we have to influence. So all of us may be called in different fields. Maybe some of you are in the field of music. Some of you uh, are in some other field. But exercise your authority to whatever capacity and make a difference. So we find that godly uh, people in uh, ages past have influenced their generation. And you know their, um, their, their uh, situation. For example, if you take Joseph okay, in the Bible, uh, there was a famine. You, you, do you all know that story? Yes, of course. So think about it. There's a huge famine and uh, nations of people will die if there's no food. But the leadership of Joseph, we read how God gave him wisdom. In the season of plenty, learn to store properly. In the season of lack, give it, distribute it properly. So people from other nations started coming to Egypt because of Joseph's influence, isn't it? So what does that tell us? There is a circumstance caused by Satan, which is you know, famine and death in people's lives. But a child of God is exercising authority, doing the right thing. And it saved so many lives. So you could even say that Joseph was um, influencing the political realm of his days. Like that, there are many examples, men and women of God, even under the old covenant. People like Moses, the way he led the people. There's so much to learn from Moses' leadership, Moses' relationship with God. Uh, so we could learn from him, Daniel. Daniel was living in um, a lot of, I've, I've especially heard young people say, uh, Pastor, you don't understand. We live in a very difficult time. Don't tell me. Because Daniel also lived in a very difficult time. Okay, So it's, it's the same, actually. The world around us has not changed. It's putting pressure. Um, it's um, you know pushing us in the wrong direction. But if a man like Daniel could stand up for God in Babylon, we can stand up for God wherever we are, right? So point is, there are people who have exercised authority in different capacities to influence even world systems, OK? In positions um, you know, uh, of influence. They were there. They made it happen. They lived for God. They made a change. So we can learn from all these people. Uh, there are many names. I'm not going to go over all of them. So we can exercise our authority over systems. Then, of course, um, you know, regions uh, in spiritual warfare, we, we, have, we will learn about it. And we've also touched on it. Uh, we can influence um, or we can overcome the, the occult and uh, the demonic world, the expressions of the demonic. We can overcome doctrines of demons. The Bible says in the last days, there will be many teachings that will be birthed from, it will not be from God. It will be from 
the demonic realm. So they are called as doctrines of demons. So we can overcome that. How do we overcome a false teaching? How do we overcome a false teaching? Exactly. So uh, we will. We should speak the truth. Speak it more. Speak it loud. So the more we speak the truth of God, what happens? Everyone will come to know that what what is being spoken otherwise is a lie. So it's as simple as that. Just teach the truth of God's word in the right way. When we keep doing that, automatically people will understand that the other things that are being said are wrong. They are false. Okay? So doctrines of demons. Uh, there could also be people uh, who are known as messengers of Satan. The Bible says there will be so-called you know, uh, people who are spreading the, the word, but it will be all false teaching, not giving glory to Jesus and you know, uh, untruth. So even such people we can overcome by our authority. So the demonic world we can overcome. Sicknesses, diseases we can overcome. Circumstances, situations, we've seen that. And even natural elements. Um, I know there's a question on the uh, online, from one of the online students. But I, I'll finish this, please, and then we can get to the question. So when we say we have authority over natural elements, Jesus said that he who believes in me, the works I do, he will also he will do also, and greater works than these he will do, because I go to my Father. So Jesus told us that all of us we will do greater works. Okay, greater works. Did Jesus do great works? Then now Jesus is saying that we will do greater works. What is the meaning of that? He already did great works. And he's saying we will do greater works. What, what Jesus is trying to say here is, uh, I, I believe that, of course, Jesus can, he's done the greatest of all works. But mm. I think because he had, he was on the earth only for a short while, Huh. We can do more in the sense we can do more That's in the quantity of it. That's true. Yes, yes. Excellent. Thank you, uh, Warren. So that's what it means. Jesus already did many mighty things. Now, we're not really saying we, we will do something more exceptional. But in terms of quantity, we may do more than Jesus because his ministry on earth was only three, three and a half years. And it's also possible that we do some things which are unique. For example, in Jesus' times, uh, they probably did not have surgeries where metals were inserted into the body. But today we have. And we have testimonies of people who say, oh, my metal turned into bone. Right? How can that happen? It's amazing. Creative miracles like that. Um, we talk about it today because we have such medical practices. Right? Uh, and, and so some unique things could also happen in our times, which was probably not existing in the times of Jesus. So that is what Greater Works is all about. Now, uh, talking about natural elements, we know Jesus calmed the storm. Right? He spoke to the storm. He said, peace be still. And the storm calmed down. Uh, other, other times when Jesus um, interacted with nature is the fig tree. He spoke to the fig tree. He cursed the fig tree and it withered away. Jesus walked on the water. Okay, uh, So all this is like amazing. How can this happen? Normally it never happens. But supernaturally these things took place. There was a coin found in a fish's mouth. He told his disciples, okay, we'll pay taxes, go collect it. Uh, so they did that. Or uh, the multiplying of food. Okay, where uh, bread, fish was distributed and a little quantity became a large quantity. And it actually uh, met the need of the hungry people. So God demonstrated his supernatural power in this way. So can we do that? Can we speak to nature? Can we speak to the rain? Can we speak to the winds? Uh, can we maybe walk on water? Everything is possible. But in a time when you know 
it is required okay so you see just because let's say jesus walked on water we don't see that he was only transporting himself on water everywhere he still went on boat on a boat or he walked to places or think about this you know he he um, uh, broke bread and multiplied food he didn't tell his disciples say hey, this is a great idea why don't we have bakeries we'll just sit and multiply food you go distribute it make money let's all make some money okay some godly bakery or supernatural bakery they could have had jesus never did it every day he did it like a one off thing right or whenever required because at that point it was necessary so today as a believer if i say i'm not going to cook just get me <laughs> bread get me or whatever get me roti and uh, meat i'll sit and multiply it all of you have to pray for me <laughs> if i do that because it won't work there are natural laws what are the natural laws you know, we have to wake up and do our stuff every day but if there is some kind of let's say a crisis or a situation where god wants to intervene supernaturally that's when we can expect such miracles but otherwise the natural law keeps happening we cannot do these things randomly or you know cleaning the house i think i already gave that example like we could say i'm not going to clean my house that the angels come and clean the house every day okay uh, god please you you assign angels angels will be like we have better work to do man cleaning houses we have to do it because we are here and you know we we experience um just the normal way of uh, how things happen and you know how things become disorderly we have to put it back to order uh, and learn to do it the natural way right so when it comes to engaging with natural elements as believers it's not like we can look at these examples and say yeah we are going to do it all the time it won't work only if it is required in that situation we can trust in the power of god and such things can take place okay so all right um let's go to the question now we have a couple of minutes left a uh, warren yes uh, just, i wanted to ask uh, uh, i mean we, as you've explained so jesus said we you know we can do greater things than he did uh, we have the ability the authority to do that but there are there are times when i met some uh, you know men and women of god who specialize in, in in only certain gifts like which is mentioned in mark you know when, when it says uh, you know some will be apostles some will have be prophets so uh, how does how does that tie in because i know uh, there are some people who are very good in the gift of prophecy and you know that's what they do but they don't have uh, you know i'm not uh, they've not experienced like healing or that sort of thing uh mm, okay sure yeah thank you warren so um, actually there are uh, at least two questions in what you asked uh, so first corinthians 1228 is that passage that you pointed to where it says god has given some in the church first apostles second prophets teachers workers of miracles um so one is about i think the i am assuming you were asking about the fivefold ministry offices and the graces that god gives people uh, it is true that god gives certain graces to people based on their call so based on our call uh, there is a grace so ephesians 4 7 it says the grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of christ's gift so based on the calling the gift will operate um so let's say for example uh, somebody who's called in the office of an evangelist we may see miracles and healings take place uh, because that's how people will come to christ so there may be more miracles in the case of an evangelist as compared to let's say you know in the case of a prophet because in the case of a prophet um Uh, i mean it, this is just for understanding i'm not saying that this is how it is but in the case of a prophet maybe there is more grace to prophesy to speak the prophetic word you know compared to do other things but if you look at a pastor uh, the the gift of god the gift of christ over a pastor's life is to be able to nurture 
to be able to shepherd, to be able to raise up, you know, uh, leaders, build them up. So the grace is accord. The gift is according to the grace. Okay. So Warren, uh, in short, that's what I would say. Um, did did that answer your question? Uh, Sorry, yes, thank you very much. Yes. Okay, great, yes. All right, uh, thank you. Thank you, everyone. So we will stop here uh, and we shall pick up uh, in the next class. So have, have a good week and God bless you all. Thank you so much.